give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Evangelist Frida Morrison, president of the International Pentecostal Young People's Union, otherwise known as the IPYPU. And I just want to welcome you to the first night of the E2 Conference. This is our empowerment virtual experience, and we have a powerful night of prayer, praise, worship, and word prepared just for you. So do me a great big favor. I want you to write in the comments what city you're from, as well as what council you're representing, and then please share this live stream with all of your family and friends and let them know that the IPYPU E2 Conference is now in session. Come on in and let's worship the Lord together in Jesus' name. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. Lord, your presence, yes, we do you are welcome in this place. Can we worship God together? Come on, sing. You are welcome.
Praise the Lord and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Friday Fire. Tonight's theme is Full Proof, which is connected to the theme for the IPYPU Empowerment Conference, taken from 2 Timothy 4, 5, where Paul tells Timothy to make full proof of his ministry. And simply, he was telling him to be sure to fulfill the duties of his ministry or to carry out the task or the requirements of his ministry. So that's what we're going to pray into tonight. So let's go ahead and begin praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for another day. And we thank you for the strength that you've given us, bringing us to the close of another week. We thank you for every talent, every skill, and every ability that you've placed on the inside of us. Thank you for the call, the anointing, God, the purpose, the assignment that you've placed on our lives. We thank you even for the strength to be able to make it this far. Times when we felt weak and times when we felt discouraged and didn't think we would be able to make it, didn't think we would last. You've carried us and we've leaned on your grace grace and on your strength. And we're grateful for that tonight. We appreciate it. And we give you glory and we give you thanks for it. 
So we pray and we ask God that you would allow us to fulfill the duties and the requirements of our callings. God, we ask that you would help us to make full proof of our ministry. Help us to carry out our, our gifts and our abilities and to, to live into our skills and our purpose with humility, with boldness, and with excellence. We're even praying tonight for every young preacher, every young leader, every young evangelist, prophet. Oh God, every young preacher, we're asking that you would strengthen and uphold by your grace and by your power. In the name of Jesus, strengthen God where they are weak. Strengthen where they feel they can't make it any longer. Help God in the name of Jesus. Allow us to continue to move forward in all that you've called us to do and to be all that you've called us to be. Help us, God, to have impact and to touch every life that we are supposed to and help us, most importantly, not to turn from the truth of your word. Help us to be steadfast. Help us to be firm and help us to be sure in the scriptures so that everything that we do and that we say is aligned with your word. We're even praying now that integrity, oh God, would be the banner and the cover of our ministries, that we would be ethical, that we would do what what is right and that we would walk in holiness and we would walk in love. Oh God, we're asking that you would help us and encourage our hearts and we know that no weapon that's formed against us will be able to prosper. So every distraction, every plot and every scheme that's been designed by the enemy to throw, thwart the purpose and to throw us off track, we know that it's canceled in the name of Jesus. The, the word says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a banner against him. And so God, we thank you tonight for the banner that's been lifted on our behalf. We thank you for the standard that's been lifted on our behalf. And we trust you, God, we trust you that you're going to allow us to fulfill our ministry, that you're going to allow us to fulfill our destiny and that everything that we're supposed to leave in this earth will be left before we get out of here. And so we lift you up and we give you glory. We praise you and we thank you because you're a great God and you are good to us. You are kind and you are faithful. Every word that's been spoken over our lives will come to pass and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. of the world, united and inspired to bounce back from COVID-19. Partner with us by giving to the Pandemic Aid Worldwide Campaign at pawe.org.
blessed standing. Hey. Oh, Jesus, there is a name. And 
every time for them that Jesus oh, oh, Jesus yes Lord you are Savior the saints that are joining us we want to just give honor to God's people we want to take the time to acknowledge our IPYPU president evangelist Frida Morrison amen we thank God for you we also want to honor the IPYPU staff we give God praise amen for you and the awesome job that you are doing in the Pentecostal assemblies of the world so we thank God amen and we appreciate you giving us this opportunity to share God's word. On today, we're going to ask that you grab your Bibles and go to Hebrews chapter number three. Hebrews chapter number three. And we will start at verse number 14. And then we will go to uh, Hebrews chapter number four and read a few verses. Amen. We want you to get along with us. This train, amen, is going to be moving. Amen. Again, Hebrews chapter number three, verse number 14, and it reads as follows. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believed not so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief hebrews chapter number four verse one and two says let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you of you should seem to come short of it 
For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Verse 3 says, For we which have believed do enter into his rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for what you have to say unto us on today. We ask that you bless each and every hearer. Lord God, that their hearts are stirred, Father. We, oh God, ask that you continue, oh God, to bless us, that we be what you're calling for. Use us mightily. Lord, we ask that you have your way. Lord God, we decrease and we ask that you increase preach holy ghost in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray and everyone said amen amen and i want to preach and talk to you from this topic that simply says i'm too close to come short I'm too close to come short. I need you to talk to somebody, a man who, for, who is in the sanctuary, or maybe you at home. I need you to say this out loud. I'm too close. Let me hear you. To come short. Uh, this is a statement from somebody who understands that they are about business and they have a destination. They have a place and a journey in mind. We are reading from the book of Hebrews, um, which is in the New Testament, chapter number three and chapter number four. Uh, when you do your research in the book of Hebrews, we find out uh, that most historians, they are not 100% who the author is, but because of the continuous theme in the book, they attributed it to Paul as the writer. Uh, we find out that in the book, uh, it is so much content in there that even though they're not 100% as to who the writer is, they can't leave it out. Uh, they've got to put it in the canon, in the, the rule, the measuring stick. The book gives us a theme. And the book of Hebrew has the theme where it lets us know that once upon a time that God was speaking through his prophets and he was speaking uh, to the forefathers, letting them know and giving them directions in multiple ways, in multiple times. Um, uh, the forefathers had to listen to the prophets so that they would know what to do and where to go. But at that time, they only had partial information. God did not reveal everything to them. And so as we look at the continuous theme, we find out in the scriptures of chapter number one that God is revealing himself through another source. And the source that he is revealing himself is through Jesus Christ. Uh, today he is speaking through his son. And his son is not just a messenger or a spokesman, but his son Jesus is the heir of all things. He is the one who reigns over all. Uh, though uh, the worlds were made by him and, and the universe was made by him and the ages were made by him. We find out that in Colossians it says, for by all things, uh, by him were they were created. In the heaven, on the earth, invisible or visible. The thrones or the dominions, everything was created by him and for him. Uh, but not only that, um, the book of Hebrews is letting us know that everything must bow down to Jesus Christ. Uh, everything must honor the one that has been sent 
by God. Uh, he is the image of the invisible God. It was by him and by his blood, amen, that our sins were purged. It was by him that we have new life. And it was by him that we have another opportunity. It is by him that we have received salvation. It is Jesus Christ who it's time for you to recognize he speaks to them and he lets the Hebrew converts know that you took Moses and you regarded him. And, and indeed, he was due the honor. But we want you to know that he was not and never will compare to Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, yes, the prophets and Moses and the angels, uh, they have authority, uh, but they will not ever supersede Jesus. And so the scriptures let us know uh, that from the very beginning, um, uh, it was all about Jesus. Um, I need somebody to shout Jesus. Hallelujah. He's letting them know um, that you need to understand um, that there is one that you must honor. And though you honor Moses and indeed he was faithful, uh, there's another that carries a word and that can do for you that Moses can never come close to. But don't allow yourself to get distracted. He speaks to the converts and he wants them to know that you're on the verge of making a fatal mistake. You're headed down the same path of destruction of your forefathers. Uh huh. Your forefathers, they went into the wilderness and they were in the wilderness and they forgot everything that I had done for them. When you look at the scriptures, we find out um, that the forefathers, those who came out of Egypt, we find out that they begin to waver in their faith. They begin to lose confidence. They begin to become weak in who and what God said that they would be. They began to lose hope because of uh, the demands of the journey. Their hope became dim. Doubt began to creep in and sit upon them. Unbelief began to blind them and cause them to lose focus. They began to sway. And they begin to bend. And as a result of the condition of unbelief, they begin to murmur and they begin to complain. But the scriptures begins to speak to us uh, and it tells them to hold fast your confidence. It tells us that don't you allow yourself to wave them because of what you see. He encourages them um, to hold tightly um, and to secure and to cleave uh, into what God has said to them. Ah, um, uh, because if you leave and you lose your grip, uh, you'll miss out what God has set aside for you. Ah, uh, hallelujah. He begins to tell them, uh, don't you make the same mistakes of your forefathers uh, because you will begin to lose your position. Um, and hallelujah, you've come too far to fall short uh, of what God has in store for you. And so he says, let me remind you uh, that you were in Egypt uh, and while you were in Egypt, the slave master um, began to afflict you and to cause bondage. Um, and you begin to cry out. Uh, and when you cried out, I heard your cry and I answered. Uh, 
not only did I answer, but I sent forth a deliverer to tell the devil to let my people go. Oh, and not only did I send my messenger Moses, uh, but I brought you out with a great deliverance um, where I released plagues against the enemy. Um, oh, the taskmaster had you bound, uh, but I turned it around upon the enemy. Um, hallelujah. Ah, uh, the taskmaster tried to mess with you and to destroy you, but I brought you out. Uh, and I made sure uh, that the plagues that hindered and attacked Egypt that didn't touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. But not only did I do that for you, I, I brought you out of Egypt and I brought you through the Red Sea. Uh, hallelujah. I did a miraculous work which you could see with your own eyes. And after you walked through the Red Sea, the adversary was following you and I told the sea to close up on the adversary and now the enemy that had you bound and had you destroyed is no longer Ah, oh, Israel, I need you to remember and to see what I have accomplished for you but now that you're in the wilderness all of a sudden you have allowed amnesia to set in and you have gotten a forgetful spirit a spirit of forgetfulness has fallen upon you understand me I know what you were doing while you were in the wilderness you were trying me uh -huh. and you were testing me and you were trying to see my power but every time that you had a need I made sure that I provided your need while you were in the wilderness I made sure uh, that every time you wanted something, uh, I provided for you. Uh, uh, because my purpose was not to bring you into the wilderness to kill you. Uh, but my purpose was to prove you. <laughs> uh, while you were proving me, uh, I was proving you. Uh, I was bringing you in the wilderness uh, so that I could humble you uh, and so that I could test you uh, so not only could I test uh, your resilience but I wanted to test uh, your heart uh -huh. I destroyed the enemy and I destroyed your adversary uh, but now I'm taking you through another test uh, and this is a test of your faith uh, this is a test to see and what you really believe this is a test to see uh, if you are going to stand up on what I said uh, right now I'm talking to God's people uh, we are being faced with all manner of things in the world uh, we are being faced with racism and injustice and uh, inequality and, and systems that benefit the wealthy and systems that oppress the poor and we have a government that is unstable and it's on the verge of collapse we have a leader that's in our government that is acting like a dictator and doesn't have any morality and it seems like the people are feeling the weight and we're going through all kinds of things uh, that seems like we're not going to make it through. Um, but I've got good news from glory um, that God brought you here for a reason. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is showing forth his glory now, and he's showing you who he is. But he's revealing unto you uh, who you really are. Uh, he's pulling back the covers. Uh, he's pulling back those things that we had confidence in. Uh, he's pulling back the things 
things uh, that we were comfortable in. Um, and God is saying, uh, I want you to stand. Uh, you were relying upon all of these things, uh, but I want you to trust in me. I want you to rely on me. Uh, I want you to declare that I am your God um, and that I am your keeper. Uh, and though it seems like the people are being oppressed uh, and it seems like the people are being overcome, uh, you need to know that I am on your side um, and that I am fighting for you. Uh, if you know that God is fighting for you, uh, you ought to open up your mouth and give him a praise. You ought to open up your mouth and magnify him. Uh, because he didn't bring you through uh, to leave you or forsake him. He's bringing you through the wilderness because uh, he's got to strip you of some things. Uh, he's got to take some things out of you uh, because right now you're not ready for promise you can't handle it yet uh, but as you go through your journey uh, as you go through your walk in life uh, God is molding you and making you uh, God is getting you into a place uh, he's conditioning you uh, that you will declare that for God I will live uh, and for God I will die for God I will stand and no matter how dark it gets there's a praise that belongs to God there's a praise that's in my hands there's a praise that's in my lips and though my back seems like it's against the wall I know God is here and he is in the midst of us Israel Israel, you made a fatal mistake that when he put you on the journey, it was an insult to God that when it was time to step into Canaan land and to step into promise, you allowed unbelief to hinder you from moving forward. You allowed unbelief to cause you to miss out. The Bible says that because of their unbelief, there were carcasses that fell in the wilderness. There were carcasses, dead bodies that fell in the wilderness. They were uncovered and unclaimed and unidentified these are God's chosen people but hear this before they fell before they, the life went out of their bodies there was a spiritual death that took place oh hallelujah hope fell hallelujah their joy fell their peace fell their confidence fell their vision failed their revelation had failed their deliverance had failed in the wilderness what am i saying to you people of god each and every one of us is going through and facing a difficult thing but i'm here to stir your faith I'm here to stir your confidence. I'm here to remind you who God is. I'm here to remind you who God said you are. I'm here to remind you of a place that God has prepared for you. And I'm here to tell you you're too close. And you come too far to come up short. Everything that you've been through is designed to get to you uh, get you to a place of death 
wilderness. He made a promise to me. God gave me a promise. And I've got to gird up my loins. I've got to stir it up. Stir up the gift that's within me. Stir up the anointing that's upon my life. I've got to stir it up. Because I've got to see Jesus. I've got to make it to the promised land. Oh, that where he is, I may be also, I may be also, and that you may be also. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has a place that's been set aside for us. A place that's been ready. But I need you to understand that there is a qualification the qualification is faith. The Bible says in the scriptures of chapter number four, it said the gospel was preached unto them and it's preached unto us. But it did not have effect because they did not mix it with faith. They did not mix it with faith. Faith is the trust and belief in Jesus Christ. Faith is the reflection of the condition of your heart. Faith, hallelujah, is looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I've got good news for you uh, that Christ is the script writer uh, and he is the orchestrator of this plan. Uh, he knows the end from the beginning. Uh, God didn't set you up uh, for you to die. Uh, he set you up to test your heart uh, and to test where you are. Uh, and so if you have not caught on yet, uh, Faith is the requirement for you to make it through. Faith will cause you to have a good report. Hallelujah. Faith, hallelujah. Amen. It's stirred by the word of God. The Bible lets us know that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Faith is necessary to please him. For he that cometh by him must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I said he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So if you think that you're going to be slapped and get God's benefit, you have something else coming. Hallelujah. Because nobody is making it out of here without being tested. The expectation is that you have the results of faith. Somebody shout faith. Hallelujah. God wants you to have faith. And so if you look at the scriptures, we have good examples and we have poor examples. The examples of Israel, they died in the wilderness. But if you go to Hebrews chapter number 11, you go to the hall of fame of faith. And the Bible says, by faith, Abel offered unto God an excellent sacrifice. God judged him righteous by his gift. Come on, come on. It says by faith, Enoch walked with God and pleased him. And he was translated and did not see death. The Bible says by faith, Noah built an ark and preached and saved his family. Uh, the Bible says by faith, uh, Abraham packed up his stuff uh, and went into a strange land uh, and brought his heirs. Uh, amen. And they received the same promise. Uh, by faith, Sarah delivered a son in her old age uh, and received strength to conceive uh, because she judged him faithful. Uh, I want you to know uh, these are their testimonies and these are their lives uh, 
but I'm here to let you know that it's not over now because your peace is missing. Your record is being written and it's been recorded. Nobody said that their lives were easy, but by faith they overcame and they went forward and they didn't let go. I like Sarah because she was old in age and everything that said, hallelujah, said she should not bring forth. Everything that's happening in your life right now says that you should not make it. But because of faith, God is allowing you to press forward. Because of faith, God is allowing you to carry something in your belly. Because of faith, God is allowing you to press beyond the the emptiness and the dryness and the bareness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I came to tell God's people that we are in a dispensation. They were in the dispensation. Some of them were in innocence. Some of them were in the dispensation. Amen. Of human government, a conscience. Amen. Some that were in the law. But right now, we are in the dispensation of grace. A dispensation is a period of time when the hearts of men are tried and then they are judged. I repeat that again. The period of time when God, the, pe- the hearts of people are tried and then they are judged. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, you are being tried. God is testing you. God wants to see what you're going to do. Hallelujah. He's trying and nobody's going to get out without being tested. But God has good news for you that he already knows the end. And all you got to do is show some faith. Demonstrate some faith. And God will fight the battle. God will defeat your enemy. Now, God will make provision. God will provide. God will turn it around. God will hold you up. When it seems like coronavirus is spread all over the place, God's hedge of protection will be around you. When it seems like there's hatred all around, God's protection will be all around you. All you got do is trust the Lord and go all the way because unbelief will disqualify you from God's blessing. It will disqualify you from his rest. There's a Sabbath rest that's been set aside for us. It's a rest for God's people. A rest when we cease from all of our labor. We cease from all of our trials and tribulation we cease from everything that we've been facing God has a place and something set aside for us I need you to know that you've come too close you've come too close to fall in the wilderness you've come too close to fall unclaimed and uncovered you've come too close to let the devil get the best of you. Learn how to shake yourself. Learn how to shake yourself and say, I'm going all the way. I will not fail. 
if you just hear and you will listen, oh, he will make a way. Somebody praise the Lord. You're too close to come short. The scripture says that while Israel was going through the wilderness and God was pulling at their hearts, he said that this generation is a stiff neck people. They're obstinate, stubborn, refuse to move. A stiff-necked people that refuse to be persuaded. I've shown them who I am, and I've shown them what I can do. But you allow what's happening around you to want to go back to Egypt to stay where you are. And you refuse to move forward. I know that each and every one of us is facing something heavy in our lives. I was telling my mother that nobody, I've already said it to you, but nobody's getting out of here without being tested. Yes. Nobody. This is an hour. Because the scripture in Acts chapter 2, it says that in the last days, I want to make sure I get it right. It's okay. It's okay, Pastor. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. And it says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I want to go to the beginning of that. And it shall come to pass in the last days. That means that there is a time that has been, there's a, a, a start time. There's a timer. There's something that has started. In the last days... He's calling us. And in the last days, it seemed like it's getting harder and harder. But don't you sway. Don't you change your mind. Don't you allow people to say, you going to church? What? There's some people... There's some who cannot go. There's a difference of can't and won't. Amen. There are circumstances. Use wisdom by all means. But don't in let anybody trick you from missing out on the power of God and the joy it is in being in God's presence. Amen. Follow your pastor and follow your leader. Amen. These churches around the world ain't never been so clean. Ain't never been so clean. I challenge you. I encourage you. Stir your faith. I know you cried. And I know you don't understand it all. Matter of fact, I don't know if anybody really understands it all. 
but I've made the decision that I'm going to take it day by day. You have to take it day by day. You're too close to fall in the wilderness. You're too close to come up short. God has a promise. And when God gives a promise, he keeps his word. He's a God that cannot lie. He's a God of truth. And he is faithful. Come on and clap your hands and rejoice. Come on, clap your hands and rejoice. Come on, clap your hands and say, I'm going all the way. Come on, come on, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. I'm not going to stop here. It may get hard, but I'm not going to stop here. I might lose some friends along the way. It said there was bodies that fell in the wilderness. I might lose some friends along the way, but I've made a decision. And Jesus is my choice. Salvation is my choice. And I'm here to let you know that peace is not just on the other side, but God is will release peace right here on earth. And in the midst of crisis, and in the midst of calamity, there is peace. And peace is in him. And he'll keep your mind stayed upon him. If you just keep your mind stayed on him. Just keep your mind stayed on him. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Everyone, my name is Patricia Reed. And I attend Christ the Rock Apostolic Church in Flint, Michigan. My, um, excuse me, I'm just making some adjustments so y'all can see me well. My father and pastor is African Bishop Wilbert Reed Jr. And um, my assignment on today is prayer. As we are always to pray and not faint. Um, but the focus of this prayer is 2 Timothy 4 and 5. More specifically, foolproof ministry. And that's what I'm going to pray concerning for those of you who are going out and ministering. Um, those who have ministry within your heart. As we know, when the Lord saves us and fills us with the Holy Ghost, we are all ministers of Jesus. Um, so I'm going to pray for every single one of us as we come together in this time. It's a very, very heavy time within our country, and it's a pivotal time. It's something for us to pay attention to. Um, so let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for all things, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful, and you're so gracious. You're so kind, and you're so awesome. God, you're so loving and pure and true, Lord God, and, and just the fact that you have allowed us to live another day, just, just the fact that your mercies were brand new on this morning, hallelujah, and we had the opportunity to experience it, Lord God, I am so grateful for that. Lord Jesus, you are so wonderful and you're awesome, Lord God, and I have to acknowledge you and your deity, hallelujah, as the one and only true and living God my father my king my savior my deliverer hallelujah god you are just all together lovely hallelujah and there's no no words that can properly lord jesus acknowledge who you are or explain who you are hallelujah lord god but you are awesome in my life lord jesus lord god and i ask you to bless us no, God, as we endeavor the things of you, completely being yielded and drawn to your spirit. Hallelujah, Lord God, I ask you to drench us and overtake us that we might be led by you, Lord God. Allow our feet to be directed by you, Lord Jesus, for if we are to go forth in righteousness, Lord Jesus, you will order our steps, Lord God. You will take us in the direction that we should go, Lord God, but it's by you that we live, that we move and we have our being Lord God and we are acknowledging that Lord Jesus I ask you to touch our hearts though God penetrates our heart in this time the heaviness of the hour Lord God allow us to remain stable in our emotions Lord Jesus that we're not irrational in our behavior Lord God but we're completely led by you Lord Jesus Lord God touch our minds Lord God hold us together Lord Jesus give us your peace Lord God that surpasses all 
understanding, Lord God, that you may be able to direct us, Lord God, that we'll be level-headed in our direction in you, Lord Jesus, as we go forward and operating in the things that you would have us to operate in and how you want us to operate. Lord God, the enemy wants to come and attack our minds. Hallelujah. Lord God, but if we keep our minds stayed on thee, hallelujah, Lord God, you'll keep us in perfect peace, Lord God. I ask you to direct, Lord Jesus, the very things that our hands are attached to, Lord God, and the places that we go into, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, that we may be directed by you, Lord God, that it's not us doing what it is being done, Lord Jesus, but it's only you and our actions always point unto you, Lord God, but purify us from the inside out daily, Lord Jesus. If you find anything that's not like you, Lord God, we ask you to take it away, Lord God, and give us a clear understanding of your word and of your will and of your direction in our lives, Lord Jesus, as we also impose our influence on those that are around us, Lord God, those that we come in contact with, Lord Jesus. We ask you to go before us, Lord Jesus, and make the way. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, as we may be able to have these encounters with individuals and be a witness totally for you, that we may tell them about you, that we may tell them about your salvation, that we may lead them toward the cross, hallelujah, that more people will be drawn unto you, Lord God. We need a revival within this hour, hallelujah. Allow us, Lord Jesus, to take on that responsibility, hallelujah, in ourselves, that we will be a walking revival, Lord God, that the job that we go into, Lord Jesus, the churches that we go into, Lord God, the schools that we go into, Lord Jesus, those that we come in contact with, hallelujah, that you will be imparted, hallelujah, that our spirits are fully reflective of you and not of ourselves, Lord Jesus. Lord God, put flesh aside. Hallelujah. Lord God, as this flesh is to die daily, Lord Jesus, and our members, hallelujah, to be partakers of righteousness, Lord Jesus, that we will eat, sleep, and breathe it. Hallelujah. That it will exude from our very pores. Hallelujah. Lord God, for you to be glorified, for you to be praised. Hallelujah. As we magnify your holy and wonderful wonderful name. God, we are yielded vessels to you, Lord Jesus. And even in this time, as you direct us and lead us, Lord God, hallelujah, we must operate in excellence, Lord Jesus. We must be fulfilled by your spirit, Lord God. And that's only found within you, Lord Jesus. Draw us nigh unto thee. Hallelujah. Draw us closer unto thee, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That we may be completely yielded unto you, Lord Jesus. Strip away everything else. Hallelujah. The distraction of this hour that tries to keep us from seeing what you want us to see. God, we got our eyes steadfast on you, Lord Jesus. We're looking toward the prize. Hallelujah. And we're focused on what you want us to see, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give us your eyes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Give us your ears. Hallelujah. That we may hear perfectly in accordance to your word, Lord God, and in the line ourselves up with you that we might mark the perfect man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, everything directs us back to the cross. Everything directs us back to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we are acknowledging that we need your help and your direction. Hallelujah. The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Hallelujah. But God, I am grateful. Hallelujah. Like you did for Peter, Lord Jesus, that you prayed for us. Hallelujah. That our faith fail not. Hallelujah. Lord God, strengthen our faith in you. Hallelujah. That we may see. Hallelujah. Those things that cannot be seen. Hallelujah. But that we might operate within the spiritual realm. Lord Jesus, acknowledging hallelujah, the supernatural. Hallelujah. That we're not going based off of what we see with our natural eyes. Hallelujah. But we are completely led and directed by you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, the enemy has come to attack our minds, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God, your young people. Hallelujah, they are crying out, Lord Jesus. Position us. 
Position us, oh God, to be able to direct them. Lord God, give us the words to say. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, in this day and in this hour, for such a time as this, Lord God, but everything points back to your word, that we have to allow ourselves to be completely engulfed in your word, Lord Jesus, that we have to absorb, hallelujah, as spiritual sponges, the things within your word, hallelujah, that we might hide it in our hearts, Jesus, that we might not sin against you. Hallelujah, oh God, lead us and direct us, draw us to all truth, hallelujah, Lord God, we're looking toward you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, help us and bring us to the point that we need to be. No, God, because we can't do it on our own, Lord Jesus. This is your plan and this is your assignment, oh God. And we are merely vessels, Lord God, yielded vessels unto you, presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. God is the least that we can do. Hallelujah. No, God is the least that we can do for the ultimate sacrifice that you have made for us, Lord God. So in return, we completely give ourselves unto you. We completely yield our members unto you. Hallelujah. The enemy should try to come and attack and destroy, oh God, but we have been bought with the price. Hallelujah. Your holy blood that was sacrificed for us. Oh God, and we ask you to drench us in you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That we are not subject to the same things, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And though we may feel the elements of this world, hallelujah, we may not be affected the same way as others, Lord God, for you have separated us. We are your peculiar people. Hallelujah. Chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. God, we are here for you, Lord Jesus. And though so many may be falling off by the wayside, God, you have a remnant. Those that will stand for you. Those that will call out your name, those that will seek your face, hallelujah, those that will turn from their wicked ways, God, you have a remnant and there is a people that will always acknowledge you as God, there is a people that will always seek your face, there is a people that is looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God, we acknowledge you even now, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, let us see what you are doing in this hour. Hallelujah. Let us not be distracted by the things that we see, oh God. But let us see what you are doing. Hallelujah. Let us not operate as other men do. Hallelujah. But equip us to stand up with the authority of your Holy Ghost, equip us to stand up with the authority of your word, the boldness of God. Hallelujah. Lord God, keep a hedge of protection around us, Lord Jesus. We need it, oh God. We need it, Jesus. We need your help. Hallelujah. And forgive us, oh God, for the how we mismanaged, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, oh God, for the things that we didn't do so good. Forgive us for the times that we did not acknowledge you first. Forgive us, oh God, for the times that we did not operate the way that you wanted us to operate. Forgive us, oh God, for not doing things in accordance to how you would see things to be done. Hallelujah. Forgive us, oh God, for not seeking your kingdom first. Hallelujah. Forgive us, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask for your forgiveness. For we want to be right, oh God, and we want to be aligned with you. Hallelujah. That we might see your kingdom be fulfilled. Hallelujah. We are here for you, oh God, your people, Lord Jesus. And as we continue to navigate in this world, allow us to not be conformed. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, allow us to not be conformed. Allow us to not be conformed, Lord God, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God, it's, it's our minds that the enemy tries to captivate, Lord Jesus, for it is attached to our our heart's desires, Lord God. But if we can 
think the thoughts of God and if we can breathe the things of God, Lord Jesus, we are able to operate in a totally different fashion. We're able to operate in accordance to your spirit. Hallelujah. And that is what you are calling for in this day and time. Hallelujah. That flesh no longer be put on parade, Lord God, but that we would draw our attention to the cross. Lord God, let everyone be clear on their assignment. Let everyone be clear on their position. Let everyone be flat-footed and firm in your word, seeking your face. Hallelujah. That we may navigate through this world. Hallelujah. In the world, but not of the world. Not being directly affected the same way as others. Lord God, but pointing everything back to you. That we may impose our influence, our spiritual influence upon this generation. And that lives will be changed. Lord God, keep your people. Keep them, oh God. Keep their minds, Jesus. <clears throat> keep their minds, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for all things. We count it and we claim it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.